Hi guys, this is GKCS. We are discussing the solution of the last week's problem, which is given an array and given a set of queries, which is range queries, you need to answer what is the minimum element which does not exist in the given range. Right? So, 2 to 4 is a range, which is this range. 1 and 6 exist in this. So, everything outside of it, you need the minimum. 2 is the minimum which does not, does not exist in this range. Similarly, 4 to 5, you have 1 and 2 in it. Outside of this, the smallest element is 5, which doesn't exist in this range. Similarly, 0 to 7 has the entire array, and this is just an edge case. So you can print null or anything like that. So uh, we won't be looking into this case because our solution handles that also. 5 to 5 is having 2. So everything outside of it, so the 1 does not exist in this range, 5 to 5, and that's why that's the answer. Okay, simple. Now what? We need to answer these queries, of course, efficiently. And like we said, n and q are rather large. So you're looking for something like you know, good, good query uh, times. So q is definitely going to exist in your time complexity. What you really want to do is get rid of that n factor, or at least reduce it. So what kind of solutions do we have? When Vinay Kumar, you know, he uh, asked me this question, I was thinking about log n solutions, but what came in the end was uh, an offline approach, something that we have discussed in detail uh, in this, you know, video series, is Mo's algorithm. This is a very important algorithm, if you don't know about this, please check it out, because this uh, question is going to be answered by Mo's algorithm. Now, the question that we have picked up in that also, D query, is very similar to how we'll solve this. Okay, and there were a few things, of course, that I used here. Uh, I first thought of mk num being the, the question which is very similar. So, uh, I started picking up data structures and just running through them. So, persistent segmentary does not work here. There are a few other approaches which might, you might try, but uh, that's not the way to go. The way to think about this problem is that you have a range. Okay, and in that range you have a set of elements. So that is like a, a set, right? Similarly, outside this range, you have two sets of elements. The one, the left, uh, the left block and the right block. So what you have is another two set of elements. So what you should think about again is sets. And finally, you want the minimum in those outer ranges. So what you're looking for is an ordered set. Okay, in, in Java, it's called a tree set. So this is implemented using a tree map internally. Uh, so that's using red black trees. So all operations on this are login operations. You can read up about red black trees in the description below. They are pretty complicated data structures according to me. But uh, yeah, login, login time requirement for all sorts of operations, search, delete, everything. So fine, we have this data structure which is going to be maintaining sets. What kind of sets? Everything which is within the given range and outside the given range. So there will be three sets, which is the left block, uh, the range itself and the right block. Till this point everything is clear. Now what do we do? Because of the tree set being used, you have the minimum of this range and you have the minimum of this range. But this range is a little different. Okay, this set is a little different. You don't want a red black tree or a, or a set here as such. Because when you take this element and you add it in your, in your right block, let's say, so you move this range to the left, you should technically add one to your red black tree if there doesn't exist a one already, okay? So, had this been a three or something, then I should have added one to the, uh, to the set here. But now I can't, because there's a one here. So the minimum over here should not be affected by one being, I mean, the, this element being added to the, to the range that we can look into. So what we realize is that these three are sets but they will be maintained differently. Over here, we are going to be having a tree set. We are going to be having a tree set over here. And we are going to be having a frequency counter over here. 
All right. One of the logical questions which you might ask is why are we not having frequency counters all over the place, or why not having tree sets? So tree set you saw is not feasible here because from the set, if you remove one, that's that's not logical because you have one here also. So a set is not going to be defining uh, these elements properly. You need a frequency counter. So once the frequency counter hits zero, like you can look at the D query video, how we maintain frequency counters. All right. Uh, once this hits zero, then you remove it from the set. And if it hits one, if it's incremented and it hits one, then you add it to the set. So that's how the frequency counter works. On the other hand, here we cannot have a frequency counter because that's not going to be efficient. When you want the minimum, you want a data structure which gives you fast querying, fast querying for the minimum uh, in the in the set that we are looking at. So therefore, we need the tree set, and we do not need how many elements do we have in the outside the range. We just need it. How many elements do we have inside the range, right? Of course, make sure that you have the Mohs algorithm thing clear in your mind because for every query, your left and right ranges will be changing. So, 2, 4, initially you'll be at 2, 4 over here. Then at 4, 5, what's going to happen is your left pointer is going to move all the way here to this point. And your right pointer is going to go to 5. So this, this pointer here is going to go over here. And your new range will be 4 to 5. Okay. Similarly, 0 to 7, your left pointer will move back, adding all of these elements into your frequency counter set. And your right pointer is going to go up to 7, again adding elements to the frequency counter. At 5, 5, what's going to happen is your tree set is going to expand, and your frequency counter is going to maintain all elements up to 5. So that's this range. And your right pointer is going to shrink again to get this range. Okay. Very similar to dQuery, uh, if you have any doubts or comments on this, then you should leave them below. I could answer a few of them, but to be honest, if you get dQuery, uh, you are going to be getting this question also very easily. It took us about an hour to uh, understand the solution and come up with this finally. So uh, try it out if you have the time. <laughs> and next we are going to be looking at either DP with trees or the editorials for the the June challenge, you know, I, I didn't realize that actually the editorials had not been put up, otherwise I would have gone for it faster, but anyways, it's coming up soon. Uh, I'm not entirely sure if in the next video I'll be having the editorials or DP with trees, but it's coming out in the next two or three videos, so nothing to worry about. Uh, and of course the results for the poll are out, and it's going to be prime queries, and it's also going to be clone me. So those are the two problems that you guys have chosen. Uh, I'll be studying about clone me. Prime queries seems uh, quite simple in that sense. So thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you next time.